Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Hopkins 7-way as well as 5-flat and 4-flat on a 2017 Thor Siesta. Now this is a great option to upgrade from your previous 7-pole, not only because you can get a nice plug that goes up 180 degrees, which this one being an angle makes it a lot easier to get our plug in, whereas our previous one you can see it doesn't quite open up as much, so you're kind of at a downward angle. It's hard to see if it's actually attached. And this one also has two handles here to make it easy. But the great part too is you're no longer stuck with just a seven pole. You also have a five flat as well as a four flat down here, so you can still get those lighting functions, whether you're hooking up to your seven or your four flat, and you can actually do both. So our neighbor here today is flat towing his vehicle, but he also has a bike rack that has lights on it, so he can plug his four pole in here, and it's gonna work on both of them. What's nice about this kit is it's going to be a pretty simple installation because it comes with a bracket to mount up. Ours already had that, so we didn't have to use it, but it also comes with the mounting hardware here, and it also comes with terminal grease, so you can get that dielectric protection on your plug. Now, you are going to just be tying it in just as you would your old 7-way. It's pretty easy, and once you have that wired up, you'll have the combination of the 4, 5, flat as well as that seven pole. So whatever you want to hook up to as far as trailer, you're gonna be ready to go. Now the first step is going to be removing our old just seven way plug and it's gonna be different from vehicle to vehicle. Ours just has a Phillips head screwdriver with a nine millimeter nut on the back. So we're gonna go ahead and get this taken out. Um, there should be four of them generally mounting up and this is gonna allow us to get to those wires and be able to work on this a little bit easier to get our new plug on. Now once you've exposed your wires, you're going to go ahead and cut them off and leave a, enough to where we can make our attachment point to our new plug. Now, now before removing your old plug, you may want to denote where each of your wires are going. Maybe take a photo picture for reference and you're going to put your new plug up and plug it in the same. Now ours has our little reference here on the cap and some of them do and some of them won't. So just to have a little bit uh, to back you up when you put your new one on, uh, again suggest taking a picture and then just put those in the same way. So basically you just don't want to go color to color because if I put my green to here it's not necessarily going to be correct. You want to make sure that it's in the proper position that your old plug was. Another thing you're going to want to make sure that you do before cutting your wires is disconnect your battery because you can have 12 volt power going through these and you don't want to arc with your wires making contact with one another. Now I've gone and trimmed back our insulation enough to slide this over and you can see this is where our wires are going to pass through and this little screw here is just going to tighten up and cinch up creating a nice almost watertight seal. So you're going to want to back that out to make sure that you have space and just pass your wires through. And you can slide this back a little bit so you have a little more room to work. And then we're going to go ahead and start stripping our wires back and making our connections to our plug. So make sure that you slide this over. If you have a split bracket like this, you're going to want to make sure, obviously, that you can get it into the bracket before hooking it up. So I'm just going to go ahead, tighten this down. And I can probably move this a little bit later if I have to, but for now this will hold this in place for me. Now if you don't have a bracket, it does come with one. Ours obviously is welded on to our hitch, but your bracket's going to look like this and it comes with the hardware to mount it up. You can simply uh, get a bracket that zip ties on to this if you need an extension down, but really you can just take a self-tapping screw and drill this into your hitch or wherever you're planning on mounting and it's going to create a nice spot for you. And you can see here, this is where you're going to be able to pass your wires through. Now we also have this cap here and this is going to snap onto this one here and this is also a good way to kind of just put this in place so we can feed our wires through and then just snap this on and that's going to hold it in our bracket for us. And this just aligns up. You're going to see that there's two flat spots or indents here on our plug and this should just slide over and snap in place. Now it does have an indent here and that's going to match this bottom portion here where our full four and five pole are. So you can go ahead and just align that however you want, but we're gonna make our connections. Um, so just make sure that we'll be able to twist this back into position before mounting it up. You'll go ahead and just tighten this down, just making sure that you don't have any wires that are frayed out. 
and you don't have to get too tight here just make it snug it should be able to hold itself like that now once we have them all attached what we're going to do is go ahead and be able to make sure that we can slide this in and you're better to loosen this up you don't want to have all your wires kind of uh, putting stress on those connections made so just to be able to slide this down now we're not going to completely put it on there because we do want to put our dielectric grease which is included so we're just going to open this up and this just kind of protects from moisture buildup um, and just creating any long-term issues with our plug it's just going to be a little added protection here so you can it comes with two packs go ahead and just go heavy on this um, so all of your connections just try to get that coated in there nice and heavy now at this point, we got our dielectric in there. This is able to close up. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down and that way it's gonna kinda seal up that entrance where our wires pass through. Now I'm also going to take a, lit, uh, a roll of electrical tape and just wrap this up. That way it's a nice watertight seal long-term. Um, this is up to you, but might as well just for that added protection. So now we can go ahead and get our hardware installed and on the front of the plug there's actually a hex molded in so we can go ahead and pass our bolt through and that should sit flush in there so then we're going to follow it up with a flat washer and then a split washer and then our nut and then to tighten all this down it's going to be a 3 8 inch socket wrench so i'm going to get these all started and then tighten these down. And we don't really have to get too tight here, just enough to kind of compress that split washer to tighten down. But again, this is a plastic plug, so we don't want to crack it. Now that we have everything tightened down, this is ready to go. We just need to test to make sure that it works. And I'm using a seven pole tester here. Um, now we have these available here at e-trailer. The other option is obviously hooking it up to either your towed vehicle or a trailer. So now we're gonna go ahead, run through the light sequence to make sure that it's all working. So I'll start off with my running lights. Next I'll do my left turn signal, my right turn signal, and then also my brakes. And that was a look and installation of the Hopkins seven way five flat as well as four flat trailer wiring connection on a 2017 Thor Siesta.